I'm Patty Simpson with Simpson Math. In this video, we're going to introduce Bayes' theorem. First, let's just talk about what it means to be Bayesian thinking. So this idea of Bayesian thinking, it just basically says that when we have an initial belief about something and we're presented with new objective information, we get a new improved belief. So we all um, practice Bayesian thinking all the time. For instance, I was walking around my neighborhood earlier and in my neighborhood, lots of people like to barbecue. So there's smoke all the time in the neighborhood. So I saw smoke in the neighborhood and I didn't think anything of it because people like to barbecue. But then I heard sirens and saw fire um, trucks rushing by. When I saw those fire trucks rushing by, then that was my new objective information. And I realized that fire must be something serious. My initial belief changed based upon that new information. So you and I practice Bayesian thinking on a daily basis. Well, Bayes' theorem is just that, only with probability. We are going to look at the probability of something when we are presented with new information. So here's another example of when we're using Bayesian thinking, and specifically with probability. So I made it to the age where I now have to go in for a mammogram. And about 1% or 1 out of 100 women my age have breast cancer. So when I walked into the doctor's office, I had about a 1% chance of having breast cancer. But then I went in, I had the mammogram, and I got the test results back. When I got the test results back, those test re results were positive. Based upon that positive test, the probability that I had breast cancer changed. And that's exactly what Bayes' theorem shows us, is it helps us to find those new probabilities once we have that um, new information. This notation says we're finding the probability of some event given another event. So when we know this information, this is that conditional probability. So this is the probability of event A given the probability of event B. Here's a big fancy formula for it. In the next video, I'll show you how to use this formula, and we'll also show you how to use Bayes' theorem just using a two-way table, how to find that probability. In this video, we're going to use Bayes' theorem to solve a probability problem. So, I'm at that age where it's time for me to start going and getting mammograms. And so I went to get one. And when I went into the doctor's office, there was a 1% chance that I had um, uh, breast cancer based upon the prevalence of breast cancer in the population for women my age. I know that the prevalence or the, the um, occurrence happens about one out of a, every 100 women my age have breast cancer. So I went in, I had the mammogram done, and then a few weeks later, I get the results in the mail and I have a positive test result. So then I wanna know what's the probability that I actually have the disease, that I actually have breast cancer, once I got that positive result back into my hands. By the way, I didn't panic when I got that positive result because I teach Bayes' theorem and so I wasn't too worried. Let's look at the probability that I actually have uh, breast cancer once I get that positive result. So the probability a woman my age has breast cancer is 1%. A mammogram has a 99% sensitivity. In other words, 99% of the time, if you have breast cancer, it's gonna catch it. It's gonna give you a positive result. 1% of the time, it'll say that it's negative. You'll get a false negative. But most of the time, it catches it and a 90% specificity. That means that if you don't have the disease, 90% of the time, you're gonna get results back that say you don't have the disease. I went for a mammogram and my results came back positive. What's the probability I have breast cancer? Now, we could use the Bayes theorem or the Bayes formula to help us to determine that probability. 
I'm going to first make a two-way table and find the probability using that two-way table. And then I'll show you how we could have used Bayes' theorem or the formula to help us to find that probability. So when I'm solving these problems, I like to first make a two-way table. So there are two variables in this two-way table. I either have the disease or I don't have the disease. That's the first variable. I'm going to put that on my two-way table across here. Either have breast cancer or I don't have breast cancer. That's one variable. Then the other variable is when you walk out of the doctor's office, you either get a positive test or a negative test. So I'm going to put that variable here, the positive test, or we could get a negative test. And I'm going to put my data on this two-way table. So, and we have the total down here at the bottom. So I'm going to use my two-way table to help me to determine this probability. And then we'll use the formula. So the first thing we need to look at anytime we're filling out these two-way tables is our total total. We want to know this total total. So the total amount in my, pop, in my population. Well, my prevalence says that it happens in one out of a hundred or one percent of the time. So I could say that one out of a hundred women have breast cancer, which means that 99 out of those hundred don't. But I kind of want to make my population larger just to make my numbers a little bit easier to work with. So I'm going to make it, if I make it out of a thousand, then that means that 10 women would have cancer and 990 would not. Notice I just added a zero to each one of those. I really like this to be 100 to make it nice and easy to work with. So I'm just going to add one more zero to each of those, just so I have nice pretty numbers to work with. Then here, a mammogram has 99% sensitivity. In other words, out of these 100 women who have cancer, 99 of them are going to walk away with a positive result. So 99% of these walk away with that positive result. So they have the disease, they get a positive test. But that means that one person walks away with a negative uh, test, even though they have the disease. Then, 90% um, specificity. In other words, of these 9,900 9, uh, 9, women that don't have the disease, 90% of them are going to walk away with a negative test. So 8,910 women walk away with a negative test, but 990 of those women with a, without breast cancer walk away with a positive test. So the total number of women that walk away with a positive test is 1,089, add across this way, and the total number of women that walk away with a negative test is 8,911. And my, my table should add up in all directions when I create that two-way table. Now, I want to know the probability that I have breast cancer given that I have a positive test. So this is a conditional probability. And that's why we can use Bayes' theorem or Bayes' formula on it as well, is because of this idea that it is a conditional probability. So if I were using my notation, I would say, what's the probability that I have breast cancer given that my test results were positive? So when I walked in, it was a 1% chance that I had the disease. But now I'm walking out with a positive test. So now my thinking has changed all of a sudden my thinking is not the same. I have a new probability. I'm only looking at the women with positive tests. So my denominator, instead of being out of the full 10,000, my denominator now is just out of 1,089, those women with positive tests. And I want to know what's the probability that I actually have cancer. Well, the ones with cancer, it's 99 out of that 1,089. 
So in other words, the probability that I have cancer is about 9%. That means there's a 91% chance that I don't have cancer. So you can see this is the reason that even though I got a positive result in my hand, I didn't panic. While the mammogram does a really good job of identifying those women who have breast cancer, there are also quite a bit of false negatives that occur. Now, the test, once I got that positive test result, because going in to get another test is not invasive at all, I went in and did an ultrasound on my breast, and it turns out I do not have breast cancer. No worries there. But this is the updated belief is the probability was 9% that I had breast cancer. Now that I've even had further testing, my Bayesian thinking kicked in, and now I know that the chance I have breast cancer is zero. So um, we change our beliefs based upon our new information. Now with this same problem, how could I have used the formula to determine that? Well, using the formula is a little more complicated than using the than just doing the chart. But the way we would do that is we're looking still at that probability that we have cancer given that we have a positive result. And then what we do is we take the probability that we have cancer. Well, when I walked into the doctor's office, the probability that I had cancer was 1% or 0.01. I'm gonna take that and multiply it times the probability that um, we get a positive test given we have um, cancer. So in other words, what is that sensitivity? The probability I get a positive test given I have cancer. Well, that's that 99% of the time we have that. So the top there is just the probability I had it times that sensitivity, the probability that I get a positive test given that I have cancer. Then in the numerator, notice that when we did that, that's exactly how we got this 99 for our numerator. We first took 1% of our total, and then we did 99% of that. So to get this 99 on top, we did exactly that. We multiplied by 1%, and then we multiplied that by 99%. All right, now in the denominator though, we're gonna find the probability that we get a positive test. We, the probability I get this positive test. But notice that when we were getting the probability of that positive test, there are two numbers there. Because I can get a positive test from having cancer, or I can get a positive test not having cancer. So when I do this Bayes theorem on the bottom, I'm gonna have two things that I'm gonna to have to add together. And so it doesn't look that way, but I am. I'm gonna to have to first do to get this number, which was the probability I have the disease times that sensitivity, which we just did here. The 0.01 times that 0.99. Then on the other part, in order to find out the positives that don't have cancer, well, that's the first the probability that you don't have cancer, which was the complement of that 1%, which is 99% or 0.99. And then the probability that you get a positive test when you don't have uh, cancer is also the complement of this 90%. The complement of that 90% is 10%. So I have to multiply that 99% times the 10%. And that's how we ended up with the 990, is we took this and multiplied it by 99%. Um, that was 1%, this is 99%. Took this, and while we multiplied by 90%, to get that, we could have just multiplied by 10%. And then you add those two together. And it turns out that you end up with the exact same thing that we would have ended up with. We ended up with 0.0099 over 0.1089, which ends up being that same 9%. So for me, using the formula is actually more difficult than just making a two-way table. Seems sim simpler to me, but to each their own.
In this video, we're going to use Bayes' theorem to help us solve a probability problem. So here, we have a certain virus that infects one in every 200 people, or it has a 0.5% prevalence. And a test used to detect the virus has a sensitivity, a true positive, of 80%, and a specificity, or a true negative, of 95%. We want to know what's the probability a person with a negative test result has the disease. Now, originally, the probability, when the person went to the doctor, the probability that they had the disease was 0.5%, or one out of every 200 people. But what Bayes' theorem tells us is that once we have new information, our probability or our thinking changes. That's what Bayes' theorem says, is that we're looking for the probability of an event, given we know the probability of another event. Now we could use this formula to help us find that probability, but I actually find that it's easier to find the probability and use Bayes' theorem if I create a two-way table to help me out. Now we created this two-way table in a previous video, the link for which is down um, in the comments below. So here we've updated our thinking with the fact that we now know that the person got a negative test. Once they have a negative test, now we want to know what's the probability that they have the disease. So in the denominator, we want to know, so first the notation, we want to know what's the probability they have the disease given that they got a negative test. So Bayes' theorem itself, what it does is it says, what's the probability we get that negative test? That's going to be in our denominator. So we're going to look to see the total number of negative tests, because that's now the population, the total population we're looking at. We're only interested in those ones with a um, negative test. Then we want to know what's the probability they have the disease. So only looking at these guys, the probability they have the disease, well there are 20 of those that have the disease. So the probability that they have the disease, given they got a negative test, is 20 out of 18,925. The probability they have it is really, really tiny. It's about 0.1 percent. So you see our probability changed. Before we started it was 0.5 percent. Now that we have a negative test, we know that the probability we have the disease is 0.1 percent. In this video, we're going to use Bayes' theorem to help us determine the probability. So Marie is getting married at, tomorrow at an outdoor ceremony in the desert. In recent years, it's rained only five days each year. When it actually rains, the weatherman predicts rain 80% of the time. When it doesn't rain, he incorrectly forecasts rain 10% of the time. The weatherman has predicted rain for tomorrow, and Marie wants to know what's the probability it actually rains. Well, before we know about the weatherman's prediction, we know that usually the probability that it rains is five out of 365, because it rains five days out of each year. So five out of the 365 days, we would expect rain, or the probability it rains would be five out of 365. But we now have new information. We know now that the weatherman has predicted rain for that. So we can update our thinking. We can update our probability. And that's what Bayes' theorem is all about. Bayes' theorem is a conditional probability. In other words, once we have new information, we can update our thinking. And the formula says all that. It says that we're looking at the probability of event A, it rains, given that the weatherman has predicted rain, given another event, in this case, that the weatherman predicted rain. And then the formula says that we take the probability that it rains, and we multiply that times the probability that the weatherman predicts rain, given it rains, and then on our denominator, it's the probability that the um, weatherman predicts rain. Now, I actually find the, the 
theorem a little bit more difficult to use than just making a creating first a two-way table. And then once I have the two-way table, it's really easy to find the probability. Now we created the, the two-way table in a previous video, and the link for that is down below. But once we have the table, then it's really nice and easy to do because we want to know what's the probability um, that it rains when he predicted rain. So notation-wise, we write it like this. The probability that it rains given the weatherman predicted rain. Now, we are only interested now, we're not interested in all the days, we're only interested in the days where he predicts rain. So we're going to look only at these 40 days where he's predicted rain. And now our denominator is going to be those 40 days. Notice that if you're using the formula, it, it has just the probability of B, but or the probability he predicts rain, but there's two ways to get that when it rains or when it doesn't rain. So you'd actually have to find two different probabilities there and add them together. So we have our denominator of 40. Then on top, we have our, um, the probability that it rains. So we want to know um, how many days does it rain when he predicts rain. So we're only looking here again, and we're looking for those four days that it does rain. So the probability that it um, that it will rain tomorrow, given that he's predicted rain, is 1 out of 10, or 10%. Um, so there's really just a 10% chance that it'll rain tomorrow on Marie's wedding day. So there's how we can use Bayes' theorem to help us determine the probability. This is Push That Rock with Simpson Math, and today we're going to look at Bayes' theorem. Think about a population, and think about a population that suffers sometimes, in rare cases, 1% of the time, from a disease. So maybe that population is teenagers. Once you become a teenager, you have a 1% chance to maybe get smart aleck penis. And so you go to the doctor, your parents take you to the doctor, and it's not that common disease, you're not that worried about it, you really haven't shown any symptoms yet, but the parents are worried that maybe you're gonna develop it. So the doctor says, well, it does affect 1% of the population. We could test for smart aleckiness in your teenage child. And so they decide to do the test, and it turns out you're positive. How worried should you be that you have this dread disease, smart aleckiness? Should you be real worried? We're going to answer that question today using something called Bayes' theorem. But you need to know that the diagnostic for these types of situations, the tool that the doctor is going to use to detect whether or not you have this terrible disease, uh, these are not always accurate. They have sensitivity and specificity. The, we're going to pretend the sensitivity for the test is 99%, very accurate. That means when it's looking at a patient that has the disease, it's right 99 times out of 100. This test has a specificity of 95%. And what that means is when it's looking at somebody that doesn't have the disease, it's right 95 times out of 100. So if 100 people walk in that don't have the disease and you give the test to all of those 100, there's going to be 95 negative results saying you don't have the disease because you don't have the disease and the test was correct. Those results are called true negatives. And there's going to be five results that are wrong. So they're going to be positive for smart aleck penis, even though it's not a smart aleck -E kid. And those are going to be called false positives. Same for sensitivity. If 100 people walk in that have the disease, 100 smart aleck kids are going to be smart aleck kids walk in and you give them the test, 99 of them are going to be correctly diagnosed as having smart penis, And those are called true positives. But there's gonna be one kid where the test gets it wrong and says, no, you don't have it. Even though they're born to be um, the worst smart in the world. 
that negative result saying you don't have it is going to be a false negative. Okay, we've got the terminology aside, we're going to use base them. Based on says that the probability of A, given some information, is equal to this formula. And this formula is kind of scary. Uh, in fact, it's um, really scary looking because finding the probability of the given event, there's a couple of ways to do it. You could, uh, in this case, you could have the disease um, and uh, get a positive result. Uh, having the disease, or you could uh, get a positive result even though you don't have the disease. Uh, you don't have the disease, you could get a positive result anyway because of those false positives. This is so bad, we're not going to use it. So, big side relief, you don't need this formula. If we don't need the formula, how are we going to solve the problem? Well, we're just going to crunch the numbers a little bit. First, we'll get an approximation. So, we have the population here. It's a disease that's 1% prevalent. That means there's one person out there in the population that has it. If we give the test to that person, it's probably going to catch that person. It's 99% correct. If we give the test to the other 100 people, though, there's going to be five of those 100 that, well, there's only 99 others, but anyway, pretend that's 100. Uh, so there's going to be five where it gets it wrong. So there's going to be five people who says, you have smart alecheiness. Oh, you have smart alecheiness. Oh, you have smart alecheiness. Oh, you have smart alecheiness. That's four. There'll probably be a fifth one. The numbers are going to be about 5%. And 5% 5 of 99 is about five. So the parents get this positive result. And they think to themselves, OMG, our kid's going to be a smart aleck. How are we going to get through the teenage years? But should they be so worried? What's the likelihood the child that got a positive result actually is a smart aleck? In this particular case, there's one smart aleck out of six positive results. That's only a one in six chance. So the chance that you're a smart aleck Given, remember this symbol means given, we probably should use the other pen. I'm sorry, Emily, my bad. The chance that you are a smart aleck, given that you got a positive test, is roughly just one in six, according to base theorem. Now, we're going to be a little more precise, not that there's a big need, and you'll see that it's going to come out to be this number. The way we're going to be more precise is we're going to, I'm going to create a tree diagram. I'm going to think of 100 people coming in. One of them has disease. And then 99 are healthy. I mean, they may have other problems, but they're healthy in regards to having smart allocations. So I've divided the population up into those that do not have the disease and those that do. When we look at this population, it's going to catch one person. Well, it's going to actually catch 0.99 people. If that's bothering you, you know what you can do? You can up these numbers. I just upped it by two more zeros. That means by a factor of 100. So 100, 100. Oh, okay, so I'm going to get 99 of the, these 100 people with the disease are positive. And these are true positives. But there's one that's negative for the disease because the, the test got it wrong. It's wrong 1% of the time. So this is a false negative. Now, out of these... 9,900 people, it gets it right 95% of the time, it gets it wrong 5% of the time. Let's do the wrong first, that'll be easier. So 
um, let's see, what is 10% of this? 10% of this would be 990, so 5% of that will be, oh my gosh, I have to divide by two. That'll be 445, is that right, Patty? She's supposed to yell out, yes, that's right. No, <laughs> that's not because right. in there, four times, and then nine times, and then five times. Oh, okay, 495. Thank you, Patty. Okay, so 5% of 9,900 is 495. Now, these people do not have the disease, but the test got it wrong, so that means it's a positive result. It's a positive result. But that's wrong, so it's a false positive. Now the remainder of the people, the 9,900 minus these 495, so if I back up 500 from this, I'm at 9,400. Add them the five back in. And these are all, the test gets it right, so they're all negatives because they didn't have the disease. And um, they're negative and they're true negative. Now our question is, I have a positive result. What is the chance I'm going to be a smart aleck? Well, how many positive results are there? There's 99 here, and there's 495 here, so you put that on the bottom. So on the bottom I have 99 plus 495. Those are all of the people that I could be because I'm somebody that got a positive result. I'm the parent of a child who got a positive result. I'm going, oh my goodness, my kid's going to be a smart aleck. But I want to know, well, how likely is it that they're a smart aleck? Well, I know they got a positive result, so I put positive results on the bottom. So that's going to give me 594 on the bottom. And now what we're going to do is figure out what goes in the numerator. Well, I got a positive result, and um, I want to know what's the chance I have the disease. Well, it's one of these 99 here, because these are the ones with the disease. So 99 goes in the numerator. So we have 99 out of 594 chances to be a smart aleck, even though we got a positive result from a test that's 99% accurate. And notice that that probability is roughly one-sixth. And that's Bayes' theorem, ladies and gentlemen. Bayes' theorem helps you update your knowledge. So I walked in with a 1% chance to have the disease, but now I have a 1 in 6 chance that I have the disease because I was given more information, namely a positive diagnostic. Math made simple. It's some math. Thanks for watching.